Hello everyone. Uh, uh, my name is Mukunda Sa, Mukunda Vikram Sa, and I'm working for uh, Digo uh, as a uh, business development manager here. And uh, it's been more than five years I'm uh, with Digo, and uh, uh, as a Digo and in a, as a company, uh, we've been working in a uh, various uh, EV and uh, EV related projects. Uh, traditionally, uh, before we ventured into the EV, uh, we've been working uh, in a various technological things, uh, gadgets, uh, and likewise in, in a renewable energy sector as well. Uh, so, uh, in a today presentation, uh, I'd like to present some uh, case examples in Nepal about the charging station. So, uh, we as a company also actively uh, been uh, uh, involved in the installation of a charger and promotion of EV and a charger itself. Uh, so I would like to present a few case examples, uh, our own uh, stories uh, in my presentation. Uh, okay, I'll uh, start. Uh, so before uh, I really get on to my presentation, uh, I would like to uh, spend some time uh, explaining about our company, uh, Digo, uh, we are like a group of a companies. Uh, we have a different company inside uh, Digo. Uh, and basically our mission and vision is, uh, is the promotion uh, of EV, uh, promotion of a uh, zero emission vehicles, uh, likewise uh, sustainable uh, infrastructures uh, and innovative ideas and uh, our vision, uh, we uh, vision to uh, to make a Nepal uh, our country or our living place a sustainable place to live uh, and uh, and a proper place and <clears throat> and the place one where our offspring, our next generation can uh, live uh, or maybe we can say we can give them a proper environment to live. So as a company. Uh, 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 in a Digo, what we have uh, done is we are into a various uh, uh, various aspects of a electric vehicles and and its system, and uh, we try to create a ecosystem uh, because it's uh, not only the electric vehicles, uh, the related service and the associated uh, services uh, related to the electric vehicles that makes the whole concept of an electric vehicle successful. Uh, for that. Uh, what we have created or what we try to create, uh, what we try to uh, do uh, are like after sales service of electric vehicles and training and development uh, regarding the electric vehicles, training and development to our staffs, to the, uh, to the people who are willing to, uh, willing to learn more about EV, a development of a charging facilities. Uh, we are also into a retrofitting. Uh, we have, we have, have done a few uh, projects regarding the retrofitting as well, and we operate the fleet service. And uh, uh, I would like to I would like to say that all of our this ecosystem is based on electric vehicles and uh, and on periphery of that. So even the fleet service uh, that we are providing is a, uh, is also uh, from an EV, and uh, we 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 support on a financing uh, aspects uh, to our customers. We are also into the battery assembly, uh, the the retrofitting projects uh, that we did, and the battery requirement for the retrofitting project. The uh, although we cannot manufacture the cell itself here, we have to import the cells, uh, battery cells. Uh, uh, but the rest of the assembly and uh, the battery pack uh, was made by our uh, in-house uh, capabilities here. And we are also uh, thinking uh, about the battery reuse, recycle, disposal, how it can be uh, managed properly. So we are all into this uh, business. Uh, uh, in in few in, in few aspects we are a little bit ahead and few uh, aspects uh, we are still on R and D phase. So all of this uh, we think uh, the whole ecosystem uh, is very very important for the whole success of electric vehicles in Nepal. So uh, before before I start uh, to present the case, I would like uh, just to recall what uh, what is EV and how does it works. Uh, so it's just 
uh, electric vehicles uh, are those vehicles which are powered by uh, EV, similar to uh, similar to the IC vehicles or the petrol diesel vehicles. Uh, the source of uh, fuel for it uh, is the energy storage in the battery, and which powers the uh, electric motor uh, or the propulsion system, and that's how the uh, vehicle runs. So uh, next uh, slide is about the EV charging station. So similar to analogous to the uh, fueling station or the petrol uh, gasoline station, uh, it's uh, it's the fueling station for the electric vehicles. And uh, uh, so whenever the SOC of the electric vehicles are low or uh, during the travel during the journey, whenever it's low, uh, it's a basic concept that you go to EV charging stations. Uh, Get your vehicles recharged and uh, and continue your journey. So uh, in the in the EV charging stations, the uh, few things that are present are like the EV charging equipments uh, that uh, our, uh, our previous uh, previous presenters also they talk uh, that uh, there are like various uh, type and uh, various standards of the charging equipments uh, and and. Uh, so there is there is a uh, it differs uh, from brand to brand, manufacturer to manufacturer. Uh, so uh, basically, a car owner or the vehicle owner they just go to the charging station, uh, which is compatible to their own uh, own standard of the charging uh, present in their vehicles. So that's how you charge. And uh, charging is uh, charging station or the charging infrastructure, I should say, uh, is like a very very important part. Uh, for the whole electric vehicle ecosystem, and uh, it's uh, it's it's a uh, it's a driving force behind the uh, acceptance level and the adoption level of the electric vehicle. Uh, without the charging infrastructure, uh, I guess uh, the successful rollout of the electric vehicle or the increasing the acceptance of electric vehicle, uh, the, the chances are quite low, or I should say, it won't happen. So it's it's very uh, essential component for the success of the EV. And the one thing you associate uh, with the EV or the EV on is the range anxiety. Uh, so, uh, as per our experience, since uh, we are also uh, into the uh, sales and distribution of the EV, so the basic and uh, one of the first questions uh, that we hear from our prospective clients uh, who come to inquire for the uh, EVs, uh, it's like, uh, how far will uh, it go? What's the range? And uh, for example, this, uh, basically we are based in Kathmandu and, uh, and uh, whoever comes uh, to inquire for our vehicles, they just ask, uh, will my vehicle, uh, because I'm not from Kathmandu or if I want to travel uh, outside of the Kathmandu, will my vehicle uh, take me to Pokhara or Narangat or maybe uh, Biratnagar? So if I buy this vehicle, can I travel to there? And uh, at the moment, uh, at the moment, the scenario is like reluctantly. Sometimes we have to say, uh, maybe that's not possible. So the charging facility uh, is 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 like basic basic for the adoption of a, or the acceptance of a EV. So uh, at present, uh, I should say the, uh, the state of the uh, charging infrastructure uh, in Nepal is like we are in a very very initial in the beginning uh, stage uh, still. Uh, so there are like uh, <clears throat> uh, there are like uh, a lot of uh, uh, companies. There are like a lot of brands uh, that been working in in an EV and they are trying to make their own charging station. So it's like uh, it's like uh, we are in a very uh, initial stage. So uh, and moving forward, uh, I would like to I would like to uh, present one slide uh, regarding the. Uh, EVs in Nepal. Uh, so traditionally, uh, there were like a, a few years back uh, when we talk about the EV, uh, we could talk about like uh, Sofa Tempo. And if we go a uh, little bit uh, in the past, uh, there were like a trolley bus, uh, trolley buses uh, operating in Kathmandu. But uh, unfortunately, uh, we could not continue that. I mean. A uh, few years back, maybe 30, 40 years back, we had like a trolley bus system that was like a, one of the uh, technology in the electric field. But uh, due to various circumstances and a very situation, we could not continue that. And I think that's one of the misfortune, unfortunate uh, for us, uh, for Nepal. But at the present, uh, there are like a two wheeler, uh, 
that's been uh, rolling out there are like a three wheeler electric uh, what we call like the auto uh, i mean three wheeler electric rickshaw that are like a, that's been running in the thorough region there are like a tempos suffer tempos and there are like a hatchback cars passenger cars and uh, sometime um, uh, because uh, the, right now the most popular category of electric vehicle is like a passenger cars uh, or the private electric vehicles but uh, uh, we tend to uh, we tend to forget or we tend to realize that in Nepal there are like a lot of commercial vehicles that has been imported and that has been already running as well. So even there are like a buses running, even there are like a pickups, even there are like a, a eleven seaters, twenty seaters micro bus uh, that's also been commercially operating uh, in Nepal as well. So uh, I'd like to go now. What kind of charging stations are present in Nepal? So here I have uh, two indicative, uh, indicative examples of the charging stations that uh, that are present. Although these were installed like uh, quite a while back, uh, but these are the charging stations that were installed. Maybe uh, that's why I, I I said that we are in a little bit uh, beginning stage of the charging station revolution or electric vehicle revolution as. Uh, uh, as well. So these were the charging station that was installed by uh, BYD in any year premises and the other, other one uh, was installed by Sundar Yataya to operate their own, to charge their own uh, fleet of electric bus. And uh, this charger was installed by a Kia and uh, uh, our uh, uh, last presenter, Mr. Varad, I think uh, he was uh, rightly involved in this project uh, to install and test this charger. So, uh, if we look, if we look at the scenario right now, uh, what we can see is most of the charger that's been installed, uh, they are uh, installed by the uh, private companies or by the uh, automobile uh, companies, uh, and who uh, they are uh, increasing just because to uh, increase their presence and to uh, increase their market presence to increase their market share uh, and to gain a trust uh, and a confidence among the potential buyer and they are aggressively looking to uh, looking to install these chargers uh, in their showrooms in their uh, workshops along the highways uh, but uh, one drawback or one limitation I, uh, I should say limitation not the drawback uh, the limitation with these chargers is that uh, they they prioritize their own uh, own customers or the uh, or the own customers or the chargers uh, basically who use that standard only. So uh, I should say it's not all inclusive uh, kind of installation or it's not all in inclusive type of infrastructure. So uh, one charger it doesn't matter the need for all the all the electric vehicle uh, that uh, pass through the route uh, where it's installed and. Uh, there are also a lot of uh, chargers. Uh, there are uh, also the chargers that have been uh, installed by the local bodies. Uh, Sagars have previously said by the municipalities, uh, road development boards, uh, different organizations locally, and also by the supermarkets, hotels. So uh, basically, uh, it's like that. Uh, and uh, the more and more the EV owners, uh, the EV buyers are growing. Uh, what we face, uh, what we are experiencing is the interest in the home EV chargers uh, among homeowners, it's also growing. So a lot of uh, people, a uh, lot of uh, EV owners who own the EV chargers, uh, basically what they get with their uh, with their EV uh, are like a generic chargers uh, that uh, charge with a very low capacity. So they are looking to install like a uh, like a cost effective chargers in their home uh, that can charge the, their vehicles in a little bit more faster rate. So this kind of chargers, uh, it's also the interest uh, it's gaining uh, among the EV owners. And there is another type of, uh, I mean, the uh, charging facility present, which is basically for the Safa Tempo. And uh, when we talk about the charging station, I think we tend to forget these uh, kind of facilities are also present in Nepal that caters the need of a uh, Safa Tempos. And uh, uh, talking about the bigger picture uh, or the bigger scale, uh, we should uh, mention about the uh, NEA, the charging station project of NEA. And uh, Sagar, sir, uh, previously, uh, he has spent a lot of time explaining about this uh, project. So I would just like to uh, 
say that uh, the charging station, uh, 50 charging station uh, uh, is been on a pipeline. Uh, it's been uh, it's been plan of electric uh, Nepal Electricity Authority NEA to be installed, and the uh, the agreement is be, uh, is already done between NEA and the Chinese company, uh, Chinese manufacturer. Uh, it's like a uh, one year completion time, and the works are really on the way. Uh, development uh, uh, of the project is there, and uh, basically we uh, as Digo represent uh, the Chinese company as their local partner here. So it's also associated with us. So giving a little bit brief about the charging station that's been installed by uh, the NEA. Uh, it's like a 50 chargers across the nation, uh, each with the capacity of 142 kilowatt. Basically there are three guns. Uh, in, the, uh, in the picture, in the image, uh, in the side, you can see an uh, indicative image how this charger might look, but the uh, actual product that uh, uh, when you get the final installation might uh, differ uh, by a bit, but this is an indicative image we can see. Uh, it's with the three guns. Uh, there are like a two DC fast charging guns and one AC uh, charging fast charging gun. Uh, the DC is with the 60 kilowatt each, and the uh, one is with the 22 kilowatt. Uh, there are like a three different configuration of a charger that's been installed uh, with uh, each with a different uh, numbers, is uh, different quantity, and uh, these are like uh, one configuration is like uh, with uh, two CCS gun. Uh, in uh, AC type two, either is like a CCS and a charging combined, and AC, uh, AC type two, and another is like a two GBT guns with uh, GBT AC uh, type of charger. Uh, basically, uh, this charger is intended to capture uh, the private passenger EV and also the commercial EVs as well. So, and uh, another uh, good initiative by uh, Nepal Electricity Authority and here again is that like they have a plan for a 50 EV charging, uh, sorry, 500 EV charging station throughout the nation as well. Uh, the, they have already opened the application from interested party and they intend this uh, uh, from the uh, from the private sector as well, the interested sector, uh, and uh, they have they have uh, outlined their plan uh, to support uh, the private sector for this installation with the uh, required infrastructure required requirement with the policies and with the uh, tariff rate, subsidized tariff rate, and all the support they can give from any. Uh, and uh, another uh, charging station project, maybe that goes a little bit under the radar, is uh, about the Saza Yataya. So it's been like uh, a start of the October uh, that the agreement has taken place between. Uh, Saza and uh, CSTC Pinwin, uh, Chinese bus manufacturer company. Uh, although when we talk about this project, uh, most of the time uh, we talk about the electric bus uh, only, uh, which is like a 40 unit of electric bus, but we tend to forget uh, there is like a 20 DC fast charger uh, been installed uh, along with this project as well. So it's also like a, one of the uh, biggest charging network uh, ever operated by any bus company or the bus operator in Nepal. So it, it, it is also a kind of a large uh, project considering the state of the uh, charging station uh, infrastructure uh, in, uh, in Nepal at the moment. So uh, the, the charger uh, installed here will be capable of charging all the bus within the, within the five hours. And uh, as per the plan of SASA, they are planning to charge the bus uh, probably in the night time. And uh, similar kind of projects uh, with bus, uh, including chargers and few with bus and the chargers separate are also been planned by the provincial government, metropolitan cities. Uh, there are a lot of interest uh, after the SADA has successfully completed uh, this, uh, uh, the, I mean, the uh, signing of this, uh, of this standard. So there are a lot of other uh, uh, government, uh, provincial government and metropolitan cities who are interested in it. Uh, maybe uh, we can expect uh, Bagmati province uh, also uh, to come up with a similar kind of uh, similar kind of project in the near future. So I think uh, these are like a quite encouraging encouraging sign uh, for the uh, EV and the EV uh, charging infrastructure for Nepal. So even uh, for this project, we are the local partner working with Saza and the uh, Chinese bus manufacturing company. 
and there is also another charge in the station, uh, but it's like uh, uh, like quite sad to hear uh, from a different news that it's currently uh, has not come up uh, in the operation. It's like a charging stations uh, of the charging facilities that have been installed in Alumini. Uh, I think it's uh, it's a part of a bigger project uh, with, the, with, the, with the electric bus and the electric uh, taxis uh, by Alumini Development Trust. But uh, even here, there are also the few chargers installed for the uh, charging of a uh, bus and a charger. And so uh, uh, these were the, uh, the previous slides were of the uh, the uh, of the chargers that were installed by uh, that were by the NEA by the private levels. Now I would like to talk a little bit about uh, what we have uh, Digo uh, as a company have done uh, in the field of uh, EV charging stations and infrastructures. So uh, we do not uh, we uh, do not claim, but I think. Uh, we believe that we were the one of the first company to import and test uh, EV uh, DC fast charger, and uh, uh, and my uh, my colleague and a friend Bharat uh, Bharati who was like involved in the testing of this project as well. So uh, I think we were we were one of the first company to import and test it, and uh, uh, the charger we imported and tested was like of a sixty kilowatt total capacity, and it had like a. Uh, six modules is of capacity 10 kilowatt uh, so we could uh, we could uh, i mean uh, customize the uh, capacity of the charger i think we tested this charger uh, in around 30 kilowatt uh, output so this charger where was of a stadium standard and uh, uh, at present if we talk about present uh, we have recently uh, installed a charger uh, in a moon port uh, it's along the uh, BP Highway. Uh, it's approximately 90 kilometers from Kathmandu uh, towards Sinduli, and it's like uh, 22 kilometers from Kurkot towards uh, towards uh, Kathmandu. And uh, uh, for for the development of a charging uh, infrastructures, uh, we have we have uh, named these projects uh, as a charge point. So whenever uh, in the future uh, we are planning to uh, install more of this kind of a chargers. Uh, in different places. If you if you see uh, the, any name called a charge point, then that would be installed by us. So a uh, little bit technical detail about this uh, about this charger installed here. It's like a DC fast charger. Uh, this charger is uh, the total capacity is of a 120 kilowatt, uh, and the minimum it can operate from a 30 kilowatt. Uh, there are like a four modules uh, each of 30 kilowatt. Uh, so the maximum scalable capacity is of the 120 kilowatt. Uh, right now, we have operated it in, uh, in a uh, 30 kilowatt uh, operational capacity. It's of a GBT standard. It has a two guns. Uh, so uh, the placement of the charger in a PP highway, we basically targeted this uh, for the commercial vehicles. As uh, you can see in a, in a, in a picture there, uh, that's the uh, vehicle. Uh, it's like an electric vehicle uh, of 11 seats that's operate from all the way from Sinduli to Kathmandu and uh, towards Kathmandu to Sinduli. So basically that charger placement there is uh, is for the charging of a, a commercial vehicle. But uh, if anyone, if any EV traveling through that uh, through that route, and if uh, it supports GBT standard, uh, I mean, uh, anybody can go and charge the electric their electric vehicle there. So similar kind of charger we just installed uh, two days before. Uh, my team, they have just uh, came back from installing this charger. Uh, this is the latest charger that we have installed. Uh, we have installed this charger in a Kurintar, uh, Dari Chok. Uh, it's like a 104 kilometer from Kathmandu, and uh, it's like from there is uh, 100 kilometer to Pokhara, and uh, it's like 45 kilometer to Chitun. Again, uh, this is a uh, same charger that we installed in a Mulko. Uh, it's GBT standard charger with two gun. Uh, right now, we have operated it in uh, 30 kilowatt uh, capacity. Uh, if uh, any commercial vehicles uh, or the, any private vehicle with a GBT standard uh, that operate in that route, uh, they can easily go and charge there. And uh, with the placement of this charger, we are trying to encourage uh, any commercial operators that 
uh, do operate uh, from like uh, Kathmandu Pokhara or Kathmandu Chitun in that route. I think it will be one of the uh, one of the uh, main points to charge their vehicles. And I think uh, if anybody is trying, to, if anybody is looking forward to operate in that route, I think this is the most important charger for them. So I think uh, with this charger, they can uh, they can think of operating uh, or giving service in that route. So. Uh, uh, although we uh, we talked about the charging stations, what are the charging stations uh, uh, from the government sector, from private sector, from us? Uh, there are still uh, the, there are still a lot of points to be thought about. There are a lot of uh, things to be thought upon. Uh, so um, I'd like to present a few things. It's like a, a types of charger placement location because not all the all the electric vehicle uh, that operate in Nepal that are running in Nepal, they are, uh, uh, the electric vehicles are of a, a different, uh, I mean, the charging protocols in it, uh, vehicles are different. So, uh, so I mean, uh, even if we talk about our own charger uh, right now, what we place in a cooling tower, although we tend to uh, install the more chargers of the other uh, charging standard there, but right now, if we talk about the present, uh, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's really sad that we cannot charge the uh, vehicles of uh, CCS or, uh, or CCS standard or even Chardimo standard there. So uh, these things need to be cons considered. Uh, our previous presenters, they have also talked about the standardization of the charger, uh, need to uh, make one common charging standard uh, about the chargers. I think these are the points to consider. And the placement of charger, uh, right now what we see is uh, every branch, uh, every automobile branch that, that are uh, selling their uh, electric vehicle here in Nepal tend to put charger uh, in their own place or where, where, wherever they like or it's like a little bit uh, we feel that it's like a little bit uh, disorganized uh, or, or uh, there's a need of organization on that. So I think uh, the placement of the charger, the selection of the location uh, should be as such that uh, can yield the maximum usability uh, of the charger. Uh, so uh, we need to consider the routes, we need to consider the nearest uh, location for the charger, uh, we need to consider uh, the availability of resources there. So, uh, so all in all, we need to, we need to, uh, we need to think, uh, the placing a charger in a certain location, uh, will it yield a maximum usability or will it just be like uh, people or the EV owner may, might skip that charger and just go to another charger. So, Placement of a charger, selection of a location, I think it's uh, one of the crucial. So, and the uh, cost and investment uh, regarding the charger. Uh, later on, I've mentioned one, uh, uh, I've mentioned one uh, point called a, called a business model uh, there. So uh, it's also related to cost uh, investment uh, and the installation cost and maintenance cost. So, Right now, uh, just uh, setting up a electric uh, vehicle charging stations uh, and uh, just uh, adding up like a twenty percent margin on the uh, fare of electricity, it won't uh, it won't make a sustainable business model. So because the cost of uh, the cost of investment, the initial cost of the charger itself, the installation cost, the maintenance cost, the cost of uh, location, all the uh, rents, fare is too high. So. Uh, we need to think about that. We need to we need to think about those models that can make uh, this infrastructure more viable uh, because this uh, will need a lot of investments uh, and uh, without investment, this is impossible. So we need to think about, we need to discuss about the business model that might suit uh, where, uh, where the interested party can just, uh, just operate, install and operate the charging stations there. And and also the next point is availability of a appropriate location. Uh, in, in, in some cases we have also faced that we'd like to install a charger in certain point that we think uh, will, be, will be suitable uh, there. But uh, the accessibility problem, the parking facility there, the, uh, the, uh, the, the lack of uh, adequate space there uh, is, is, is like, a, uh, it's like preventing us uh, from uh, installing a charger there. So these are all the these are all the uh, what we can say uh, it, it are the are the factors that are holding us back. And I already talked about the charging standards, difference in the charging standard among the EV brands. And the other important thing is like a uh, policies, guideline, regulation, 
presence of a regulatory body uh, that can uh, that can that can regulate the operation because uh, right now it's just like a, it's like a very beginning and uh, and everybody or the every uh, supplier they are doing their own uh, working on their own but uh, in the future when this uh, this uh, this infrastructure or this whole proposition it goes uh, grows uh, uh, into big uh, there is uh, clearly a requirement for a uh, clarity uh, some uh, SOPs operating procedures regarding the charging station and right now since uh, the NEA, uh, I mean, uh, like it or not, uh, NEA is looking after all these uh, all these uh, charging station infrastructure. So there should be like a proper guideline, and uh, if required, there should be like a separate regulatory body that can look upon the charging stations and that can regularize it, that can uh, that can uh, work on the proper SOPs, guidelines, regulations uh, on it. So I think uh, it will it will be it will be it will become up uh, it will come up as a uh, as a require. I mean. A necessary requirement in a very very near future, and also the other point is like uh, adequate power supplies, uh, irregularity in power supplies, and also the approval duration uh, for the uh, for the for the connection lines uh, from NEA. So lot of uh, lot of uh, even in our household now uh, we we face uh, the ir irregularities uh, in the power supplies of uh, voltage for fluctuation. Uh, so. Uh, for a charging station, this is like uh, one of the uh, one of the challenge, and uh, we've been hearing we've been hearing from the uh, from the charging stations that we have been operating in a Mumbai, we have not been good in charge. Uh, is like uh, because uh, I would like to I would like to give an example. Uh, the charging station in a Mumbai, uh, basically we have targeted it uh, it for a commercial vehicles. Uh, the the vehicle that we have sold in that route, there is like already vehicles uh, operating from Kathmandu to Sindhuli Road. Uh, so whenever they uh, they they come from Sinduli, uh, they come to that point, the charge point, and they charge their vehicles and they complete their journey towards Kathmandu. And similar is the case uh, when they go back from Kathmandu. But uh, whenever they reach there, at the time of uh, at the time there, uh, the passengers are there. They 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 eat foods or they take like a tea coffee there in that hotel. Uh, but the vehicle it's been charged while the vehicles have been charged there. Uh, but due to the irregular supply, if there's like a power cut, there is like a no power supply there. So uh, it, it would be like a kind of very awkward situation there because they need to charge their vehicle at all costs uh, to reach to reach to their destination. So uh, for this uh, for this kind of for this kind of uh, places for this kind of charging stations, I think the NEA should look and uh, give it a priority. So. Uh, you may be you. We can also think about a situation like we may have to we may have to place a backup generator just to uh, just to charge that vehicle vehicle because that vehicle cannot work uh, wait there uh, long enough uh, just to just waiting for the power supply to get back uh, and complete that journey. So it's it's uh, I mean it's it's not possible. So and 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 it doesn't make any sense uh, keeping. Uh, the backup generator there and uh, burning a fuel and charging a uh, and charging a vehicle rather than uh, you could easily just operate a fuel vehicle or the IC vehicle. So I think any any should uh, keep these uh, these factors uh, in the in the priority and I think look upon that and even for the approval duration for the power supply for the connection I think they should expedite and I think they should expedite the process and just uh, if they are if they are really serious on this matter I think they should. Uh, they should do it very uh, complete the process very very quickly, and other point is like uh, I mean uh, at present uh, whoever is operating uh, electric charging station it's like kind of uh, in an individual basis on a standalone basis. So all of the chargers it's been operated. Uh, the EV owner just go there and charge, and and whatever the payment is they just pay and leave. Uh, if you have to, if you have to uh, check uh, where where the charging station, is, uh, where kind of find the charging station, is that charging station on an idle mode or is is it like a free to charge? So it's not like uh, we cannot do that at the moment. So all the integration in the networking of the charger are creating one big system so that uh, EV owners uh, can easily track the location and the charging standard. I think that's uh, that's also the necessity. And I already talked about the business model. And I'd like to talk uh, about the EV owner's attitude also. 
we as a uh, EV owners, whoever is, uh, whoever are owning the EV, uh, they should consider this charging station as like a, like a resource, and, and and that resource is not there just to fulfill their demands. It's it it it, it, it is a resource uh, that should be there for all. So uh, I mean, uh, we've uh, been hearing been hearing the social media, we've been hearing the feedback. So a uh, few days back, I was just reading, uh, uh, reading uh, somewhere in the social media that uh, one EV owner he just went into a shopping mall uh, and um, and he went to charge uh, charge his EV there, and there was already uh, one EV already in the charging uh, position there. And uh, after three or four hours, when he came back, uh, that EV was still there, and uh, maybe that EV was already charged. And, uh, he, uh, and 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 that EV owner also mentioned that uh, two or three EV they just came there to charge and uh, seeing that uh, it's uh, one EV is already there charging they just sit and back so I think uh, the owner uh, the mentality or the attitude of EV owner should also uh, we should also think uh, think uh, about it and uh, while we talk about the charging stations we tend to talk only about the charging stations of the four wheeler, uh, the passenger vehicle, or the commercial vehicle, but uh, the popularity of a two wheeler uh, EV are also growing. And uh, so I think we should also talk uh, about the charging stations for the two wheelers as well, and about the commercial vehicles as well. Uh, also, we should, I think, we should talk about that one as well. And they are user friendliness, interactiveness of the EV, uh, EV charging stations. The, uh, uh, we can't we can't assume that all the uh, all the owners or all the driver of EV uh, will be will be uh, I mean uh, literate or will be literate to that extent to use that uh, we use that facility. So uh, it should be very uh, user interactive, uh, easy to use, and uh, considering uh, the, the electricity involved there, it should be safe to use as well. Uh, so uh, there should be uh, steps to steps to mitigate the electrical hazards as well so these are the few points that uh, i think we should consider and and these are not the all and maybe there could be like a other few points as well to talk about uh thank you everyone uh this was the presentation thank you for listening uh thank you